Remember the spirit of your parish community, the power of worshiping together, the warmth of friends new and old who share your faith. Join us for Mass this weekend. Visit archbelt.org to find a Catholic parish near you. Feel the joy. Good morning and happy Easter. A special welcome to any guests who are with us today at the Cathedral of Mary our Queen, either those guests who are with us in person or those joining through our webcast. Our cathedral guides will be available immediately after mass in the front of the church to answer any questions that you have or to give you a brief tour of our beautiful cathedral. <clears throat> our mass setting is the heritage mass that can be found in the front of the insert in the inside back cover of your hymnal. All of today's hymn numbers are listed on the board, but they will be announced as well. And today's readings are in the back of your hymnal at number one, one six five again that's one one six five the collection at the usual time at the offertory is the easter collection and the second collection after communion is our general collection our celebrant today is archbishop william e laurie he is assisted by deacons mike Masulia and fritz bauer schmidt on this Easter morning, we join together in our opening hymn, singing number 614, Jesus Christ is risen today. Again, that's number 614. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this, the day the Lord has made, the feast of the Lord's resurrection, we gather together in faith and in joy. Let us ask for the grace to enter into this sacred mystery with mind and heart renewed. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with them after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one anointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel see his mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and and be glad. The hand of the Lord has struck with power. His right hand is exalted. I shall not die but live on you, declaring the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord of love and mercy has brought wonder to our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on the earth. 
for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Please remain seated and join in in the Easter sequence, number 626, Let All Christians All Their Voices Raise, number 626.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, they went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends in the risen Lord, in the small hours of Tuesday morning, a ship collided with the key bridge, bringing it down in an instant and suddenly taking the lives of six workers. All of them were fathers of families. All of them were hardworking men who came to the United States to make a better life for their loved ones. On this Easter morning, we pray for them, and not only for them, but for their grieving families and for the seafarers directly impacted by this event. Yet even as we earnestly pray for them, this tragedy makes clear to us all how fragile is our life upon this earth and how precarious is the work of our hands. None of us, myself included, likes to be reminded of our fragility and mortality. Something in us protests. Something in us does not want to die something in us wants to live forever. When we fall in love deeply and irrevocably, do we ever want it to end? When we are surrounded by family and loved ones or engaged in work that brings us satisfaction, do we ever want that to end? And as our days grow shorter, do we not all wonder somewhere deep down 
how we shall be remembered. So we attempt to avoid the death we fear and to attain the immortality we desire. For example, we try to prolong our lives through diet, exercise, and medical care. And indeed, life is God's gift to us. And so we should take care of ourselves. Yet even the best care only prolongs the inevitable. So we try other tactics. Some may try to live on in their children and grandchildren, hoping that their offspring will be like them and will say nice things about them when they're gone. Others try to achieve immortality by becoming famous, even infamous, hoping that future generations will admire them, a path open to but a few. It turns out that self-made immortality requires that one live in others, whether it's one's progeny or in the memories of family, friends, and colleagues. At best, this yields only a shadow of reality. It fails to satisfy. Where then can we turn? Are we destined to be absurd, frustrated creatures, finite beings filled with infinite longings? Or might there be a path forward? Could it be that vain attempts to live on in others provides a clue, a way to break out of the most insoluble of human dilemmas. That clue is love. We want to live on in those we love, whether it is a spouse, children, friends, or trusted colleagues. And that is perfectly natural. It's normal. It's something very human and very beautiful. Yet those loved ones in whom and through whom we wish to be prolonged, they too suffer from the same fragility and mortality that besets us. Thus the words of Isaac Watts' famous hymn, time like an ever rolling stream bears all its sons away they fly forgotten as a dream, dies the opening day. So it is. We look for a source of a love stronger than death. But where to find it? The answer to that question is not found in science or politics or poetry. It is found in faith. Faith in the one who is the source of our being. Faith in the one God in three persons who is, who was, and who will be. Three persons in one God who live eternally, one in their love for the other. It is this infinite love upon which our life was founded. This is the love in whom we live and move and have our being. The Father so loved the world, says John's Gospel, that he sent his only Son Jesus came into a world shrouded in sin to reveal the love that is the source of our being. 
the very love that rescues us from sin, that is, from anything that hinders us from opening our hearts to the infinite love by whom and for whom we were made. Thus did the eternal Son become one of us, preach the good news, heal the sick, raise the dead, forgive sin, and take upon himself every form of sin, human suffering, and futility. He brought those things to the cross, and on the cross he conquered. His was not a triumph of brute force or clever tactics, but the triumph of love, a love stronger than sin, a love more powerful than death. Buried in a borrowed tomb, he rose in a human body, at once the most pivotal and the most stupefying fact of human history. Pivotal because it seals the link between love and, and immortality. Pivotal because it means that biological frailty is not the last word about us. For Jesus, risen in his human body, is more than a resuscitated corpse. Oh, he is still one of us in his risen life, but he is different, beyond the grasp of time and space, beyond the grasp of sin and death, a humanity restored by the glory of God and transformed. This is pivotal because the risen flesh of Christ opens for you and me the way to eternal life. And for that same reason, Jesus' risen life is stupefying, stupefying in that the Gospels cannot fully describe the resurrection, stupefying that even the disciples who encountered the risen Lord were by turns astonished, doubtful, fearful, and jubilant. When filled with the Holy Spirit, they would spend the rest of their lives bearing witness to the risen Lord who by his cross and resurrection broke through the barrier of sin and death to restore our humanity. To believe in this, the greatest of all mysteries, requires that you and I rely on witnesses, on Mary Magdalene, on Peter and John, all of whom we met in today's gospel reading, and on St. Paul, who saw the risen Christ seated at the right hand of the Father, and on the apostles, bearing witness to the risen Lord after Pentecost. Our belief rests upon their testimony, the testimony of those who staked their lives on this truth. Peter, John, and Paul would give their lives in testimony to the risen Christ. For them, love was better than life, for only love triumphs over death. So also, a succession of martyrs from the dawn of Christianity until now have given their lives in testimony to the truth of the resurrection. We, you and I, can do no better than to accept their testimony as true and life-giving, as today we assemble anew to profess our faith in Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. But we can also look closer to home, 
for witnesses to the love we long for. In the days following the tragedy at Francis Scott Key Bridge, Father Akko Walker, pastor of Sacred Heart Church in Highland Town, ministers lovingly to the grieving families, a pastoral love rooted in the infinite love of the God who died and rose to save us. On her 103rd birthday, my dear mother, God rest her, smiled and said to me, she said, Bill, it's about time I start living on the other side. She could say that with serene assurance because throughout her life, she shared in the Lord's risen life through the Eucharist and because in her quiet way, she bore witness her whole life long to love beyond all telling. And so Father Akko and faithful Catholics like my mother also stand as witnesses to the Lord whom we acclaim as the resurrection and the life. Pope St. John Paul II once said that in the Eucharist we digest the secret of the, of the resurrection. The church invites us to the Eucharist, Sunday after Sunday and day by day, not to impose upon us and not to take up our valuable time, but out of a burning love inscribed in her very heart to share with us the Lord's risen life so that you and I might find the infinite life, love, and immortality we long for through him and with him and in him. The Lord is risen. Indeed, he is truly risen. Alleluia, alleluia. My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so now I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us forgiveness of our sins, keep us in his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Trusting in Christ's promise to remain with us always, let us turn to God in prayer. For the Church of God throughout the world, entrusted with the good news of Christ's resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those reborn through the waters of baptism, especially those baptized last night at the Easter Vigil, and for those who completed their Christian initiation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world that waits to know the peace of the risen Christ, especially for Ukraine and Gaza and for our own city of Baltimore, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who in this passing life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the collapse of the key bridge, especially those who died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, marked with the sign of faith, and for those whose faith is known to God alone, that together with Mary our Queen and all the saints, they may behold the glory of the risen Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who willed that through the Paschal mysteries the gates of mercy should stand open for your faithful, look upon us and have mercy that as we follow by your gift the way you desire from us, so may we never stray from the paths of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Exalted with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. We give up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we may come with prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, so they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, 
and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, this almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We are servants and your holy people, offered to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us to beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Happy Easter. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall. Our communion hymn is number 1023, I Receive the Living God, number 1023.
Our second communion hymn is number 1025, Take and Eat, number 1025.
let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by these paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I would like to join with Father Bianco, the rector of the Cathedral of Mary, our Queen, Father Justin Goff, Deacon Fritz, Deacon Michael Masulia, and all the staff here at Mary, our Queen, uh, in wishing you a very blessed and joyous Easter. You know, we celebrate Lent for 40 days, but we also celebrate Easter for a season of 40 days as well. So great is this wonderful mystery. I hope that all of you will regard the Cathedral of Mary, our Queen, as your spiritual home, and I hope that you will come home early and often. I'd like to thank Julie Grace Mails and our choir for leading us in song and raising our minds and hearts to God today. And uh, I would uh, ask that the Lord now bless each one of you, your families and loved ones, and your works of heart and hand in his risen love. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Please open your hymnal to number 609, Sing with all the saints in glory, number 609.
Make this your time of spiritual renewal. Return to the faith that has always guided you, always uplifted you in challenging times. Join us for Mass this weekend. Visit archbalt.org to find a Catholic parish near you. Feel the joy.